Hi, this is Joe again with another review. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be discussing the 2019 film, Judy, starring Renee Zellweger. Now, of course, this is her second uh, win for for uh, for uh, Best Actress. I think in the first movie she won for Best Supporting Actress, and this in this role she won for Best Actress, playing Judy Garland. Of course, the problem with this movie is, of course, the simple fact that it's not accurate enough. I mean, that, that's like the huge, huge, huge complaint. And, not, and of course, those of you who uh, were, you know, weren't around there like I was, I mean, you, you wouldn't know how accurate this movie is Does he happen to live around that time when you know what Julie Gordon did professionally and her public uh, persona and what she did outside the stage or, or outside the movies you know what she did publicly and personally you know her own personal demons and stuff but if you watch the movies oh this is how Julie Gordon really was you really really don't know unless you actually were you know a fly on the wall you know how she really was now not denying what the film depicted. I mean, in terms of, I mean, she did have her own personal demons. I mean, in terms of drinking and boozing it up and taking pills and stuff. But how much did she really do is a matter of speculation and conjecture, and you we really don't know. Well, we know her daughter Liza Minnelli has her own drinking problems and and uh, pill popping, and just like her mother. But the problem is that how much did she really do in terms of drinking and, and pill popping? You really don't know. But in the movie Judy, it really shows it. And so, and that's one of the problems of, of the movie. And the other problem with the movie is that uh, Judy Garland's two most famous kids, I mean, she, I mean, she had three all together, and that's Lady Minnelli and Lorna Loft, who's the two older uh, kids. That she that she had, had. Uh, did not support this movie, did not endorse the movie, because it made their mother a really in one no character, you know, as a drunk and a pill dope, a dope head and all that type of thing, and so because of that, they could not support the movie because it was like degrading their mother, uh, or ruining the, the memory of their mother, even though they lived through it. Uh, Lady Minnelli more than Lauren no left her because she was just I don't know how the old Lauren Love was when uh, Judy Garland passed away but uh, I know Lady Minnelli I think she was in her 20s I think she was about like 24 25 years old when, when, her, when her mother passed away so so even though she was in her 20s by then or early 20s she lived through it more than uh you know, the other two kids there. Uh, anyway, I should mention that Renee Zellweger gave a great performance in the movie. She really did deserve the Oscar win for her portrayal as Julie Garland. I, mean, I thought she was great. She kind of looked like her. Uh, and she did kind of get her mannerisms down. But the problem is that Renee Zellweger is doing more like an impression of Julie Garland. I mean, she, because uh, I know kind of... Uh, Imitation of, of Judy Garland, she couldn't. Uh, Renee Zellweger couldn't get the voice down. I mean, she was speaking as herself, Renee Zer as herself, as Judy Garland. You know, she's made up like Judy. She had her hair made and the makeup on her face. She looks almost exactly like uh, Liza Minnelli. I mean, not like, I mean, excuse me, I mean, Judy. She looks almost exactly like Judy Garland. The problem is, she sounds like Renee Zellweger. So, so, and I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking. Uh, Renee Zellweger for acting ability. I mean, I'm not. It's just that she doesn't have the ability to do a, to impersonate her voice, or even her speaking voice. Even though Renee could sing, I mean, she proved that when she when she was in uh, the movie version of Chicago, she proved that she, that she could sing and sing fairly well. But the problem is that she's singing and speaking as herself, not as, you know. There's only one Julie Garland, but I mean, if she could impersonate Julie Garland speaking wise, 
and be more of a believable performance. But but she was speaking as Renee Zellweger doing an imitation of Judy Garland. I mean, she got her mannerisms down, and you know that type of thing. But you still hear the Renee Zellweger high pitched uh, voice. I mean, other than that, there's my, my only criticism of her performance is that. Other than that, I mean, I thought she did a fine job. I mean, she tried to sing like Judy Garland, and no one could sing like like Judy. I mean, and I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, and I don't mean any disrespect to Renee Zellweger at all, uh, but there's only one Judy Garland, and no one could sing like, and even her daughter, Liza Minnelli, can, can't sing like her mother. I mean, that's how unique talent Judy Garland had, you know, growing up. Even though you had most of the scenes in Judy as well as an adult, and I know going into a long, 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 long details, but it's like six minutes, and I haven't really talked about the movie that much. But the movie Judy really takes place at the last year or two of Judy Garland's life. Really, like the last year, year and a half of her life, where she was mostly performing in London in this, in this club. Like, like I said, you know how accurate it was. But, but she, she was performing in London during the Christmas season and she usually performed with the two kids, you know, with Nora Loft and her son, Joey Loft. Uh, but her ex-husband, Sid Loft, fought for custody if she took the two kids to London because he felt the two kids should stay in school and so he didn't have a problem with the two kids spending time with her during, during the summer or if they want to break from school, he doesn't have a problem with, with the two kids staying with her. But I felt that they, but he felt that they missed too much time at school. So he said, all right, they can stay with you during the school year and I have them on the, during, when they want break from, you know, the, the various vacations from, from school. And, it was, and they eventually worked that out. <coughs> but, you know, Lice is there, um, you know, like Judy is there by herself in London. Um, she doesn't even have Liza, Liza Minnelli, her daughter Liza with her. Because she's doing her one thing. She was either in college, doing her one thing, whatever. And, and so she, some of her old demons came back, and you know, her drinking, being late to, to her performances and stuff. And eventually, she got uh, fired for, from that job in, Le in London. And then the, the guy who was now performing at the club, who was in her, her band, or at least the band that performing with her, says, why don't we come out, let, let me sing one song for, for, the, for the group. Will you let me sing one song, you know, just to say goodbye to the uh, London audience. And the guy says, thought about it, and went, okay. And she did, of course, the song she performed was Over the Rainbow. And that's how, pretty much how the movie had ended, with her singing uh, Over the Rainbow, and then she got, she got so emotional, she couldn't finish the song. It's kind of like what Jerry Lewis, what happened with Jerry Lewis, I think it was like in 2010 or 2011, where he did the last telethon for the MDA for, on Labor Day weekend. I think, I think it was in 2010. Can't believe it's been that long already. Without Jerry Lewis telethon on Labor Day weekend now. <coughs> when he got so excuse me, when he got so emotional that he couldn't sing the song excuse me, you, you never walk alone from the movie Carous from the from the Broadway show excuse me. And, and the movie Carousel. And he couldn't finish singing the song and he just had to drop the mic and he walked off the stage and that's it. That was a similar, similar ending with, Judy, with uh, Judy Garland singing Over the Rainbow and the audience, I'm not kidding, the audience finished the song for her and she got so moved and she says, and she thanked the audience and, that, and they rolled the closing credits and that's, and they flashed on the screen and Elias lived for another six months. She, she, would, she died like six months later after finishing her performances in London. Uh, that's how recent that this film is in, in her life. It covered like the last, uh, like, like I said, like the last year, year, year and a half of her life. And but throughout the movie, 
we should mention that they had occasional flashbacks to when Judy was filming, or I mean, either in the process of filming or just about the film, uh, The Wizards of Oz, and how Louis B. Meir, who was the head of MGM, when he pretty much was groping her, and it was kind of like, acting like almost like a Harvey Weinstein almost. And, and I'm not saying he physically had sex with Judy Garland, but I'm saying he was pretty much molesting her and, 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 physically, and physically treating her like crap because she was not allowed to eat anything. She was constantly hungry. They wanted her to lose weight. Because, you know, like, like the old ads, the camera adds 10 pounds to, 10 pounds to you. So, so she was convinced not, not to eat anything, and she got very, very little sleep. And, she, and they keep giving her pills for her to stay awake and to, for, and, and for her to sleep. And the two pills can make, messed up, messed up her system so that she never slept for months, if not years. Ne ne never slept awake. She, she was always up. She could never, she could never get any sleep at all, and that's why she was always so uh, out of it. When, when, so, sometimes when she's trying to get on, onto the movie set, because she was so doped up on pills, because the, the movie studio doped uh, when she was working for MGM, or I should, I should say, had a contract with MGM. She kept doping her up so they could work longer, because at one point uh, the younger. When she had the younger scenes, when the younger actress uh, was doing Wizard of Oz, when, you know, she complained, oh, I've been up for 18 hours straight. I mean, I mean to, and, and, and so Louis, uh, Louis Mayer says, I don't care how long you've been up, we're going to keep filming until you get the stuff right. And, you know, pretty much you know, physically and, and, me and mentally abusing her. And that's why Judy, went, you know, turned to drugs and turned to... to to drinking alcohol and all that stuff because of how she was treated, and and that's why she, that's why she has had a tough time. And, and Dora Liza is, is almost exactly like her, like her uh, now, unfortunately. So 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 they go into that a little bit of flashbacks, and and then you had when she was before when Judy Garland was performing a lot of had these two homosexuals who kept following her around. And when she was replaced, or fired from the show, there was two homosexuals who got ticked off that they replaced her. Uh, and the people in the in the state in this in this lounge they replaced her with, with some with somebody, uh, which they got ticked off over. and said, "How dare you replace Judy Garland? We we spent all this money to see Judy Garland, and, and, and you did this to her." I mean, I, I mean, that, it also proves that. At the time that Judy Garland had a big gay following, to this day, even though she's been dead for over 50 years, uh, now at the time of doing this video, you know, she still has a big gay following. And the reason why she has a big homosexual fo following is because she sang this her most famous song is singing over the rainbow and the rainbow flag, you know, the gay, the gay flag is a, the rainbow. It's a rainbow flag. So that's, so that's why homosexuals liked her. And of course, that, and through her daughter also, like Judy Garland through her door, like the Manelli, because she also, for some reason, also has a big gay following. Um, but she can, I can never understand. Who knows? Maybe somebody could, could tell me that. Why, see, Liza Manelli and Judy Garland, both of them had a big gay following. That's because she's singing the song over the, Judy Garland singing the song over the rainbow? I mean, come on. Uh, old kids like that song, especially if you're a girl, you know, a young 12 or 13 year old girl. You were like Over the Rainbow from the Wizard of Oz, because it was, especially when I was a kid, that movie was, Wizard of Oz was on all the time, and now during the Christmas season, TBS shows that movie all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, my, my mouth is getting dry because I've been speaking for so long. But, uh, as, a Judy, uh, as a movie, I thought the movie, uh, Judy was okay, not great. Uh, this is like Eliza Minnelli and Nolan Love to write. This was really a one note performance. And it's all Renee Zoringer's performance, and pretty much that's it. Because, it's, because like I said earlier, in the earlier in this review, you don't know how accurate this movie really is. 
how accurate is this movie? How, how accurate the movie really is? That, that's the big question. So that's my review of the movie Judy. Please click on the video, please read it. Please subscribe to my channel. Please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. You can check out all my reviews and only on my YouTube channel at rallyc.com. So WDY and rallyc.com. That's my homepage. You know, reviewer Christy Moore. And please check out all of his videos on his website. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.